pew 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 and we're live sorry for the pew pew noises but <laughs> it, we see something on our screen that you don't get to see so we're out over here enjoying ourselves so um happy that you're here this is the live stream that we do every thursday night at 8 p.m eastern time where we answer your questions from patreon and from youtube members uh as a priority but we also answer a bunch of other questions too we have a bunch of stuff tonight you saw the thumbnail um we're going to talk about why i think the new made in mexico player acoustasonic is the one to buy and i know some things that the other internet youtube guys the other internet don't know so we're gonna i i got some scoop and, and we're also going to address, uh, well, it's one of the questions tonight, but I'm just going to spoiler alert you. We are also going to talk about my bad quality control experiment hmm. with the email that I've been doing. So okay. yeah, we have a bunch of stuff to do tonight. So let's get jamming. thumbs down frank has already been here i know before we even got started i know who one of the thumbs down franks is Ooh. i called him out okay it is somebody who has followed our channel for a very long time okay i'm not gonna say his name i like youtube docs him uh i don't know why he's such a guitar mudgeon that's my word what's a word what does that mean guitar mudgeon yes what does that he's mean? a curmudgeon about guitar stuff Look up what a curmudgeon is, and then you get back with to make sure I'm using the word right. But I don't know why he's such a guitar mudgeon about stuff. He's been following the channel for a long time. I do appreciate the fact that he watches so much because he really does. But he's just one of those people about a lot of things. So a bad-tempered person, especially an old one. Yes. So I'm using the word correctly. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I just don't understand why people have to be so negative, but I still do appreciate his YouTube support, so I will not call him out, and I thank him for being here, but at the same time... How did you find out it was him? Oh, I have fairly good investigative and timing skills. Ooh. Like, I don't like a thing, thumbs down. Uh. Mm-hmm. During a premiere. Oh, okay. So it was like very easy to track what was going on. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, he's probably here. Or somebody like him is probably here. So what we do is we answer questions. We are going to get to the topic that you saw in the thumbnail. Just for everybody else that doesn't know what we do. Uh, we're going to do that first. And then we're going to get to the topic in the thumbnail. Sort of like 60 Minutes or Oprah or any other show that you've seen. Since TV was invented, uh, the important stuff comes a little later. That's how... So before we move on... This works. Yes. We can see the thumbs down. I can't see the thumbs down and somebody else that said I can't see it. So I wonder if it rolled out on your channel. It did roll out on my channel. It must have. I'm telling you, there's a thumbs down. So they can't see it. That's very interesting. It is very interesting. Because <clears throat> I was like, why can't they see it? But I can't see it either. So you have a button to push, but you don't have the stat below it. Yeah. Like I can see the like, even though it's not accurate, yeah, I yeah, have yeah. to refresh. <clears throat> cool. Well, interesting. Here, I'll refresh. That's very interesting that that has happened. I have to wait for your ads. Yeah. Thank you. Mm, that, yeah. Okay. That came up in a, in a video comment thread the other day. I can't stand these ads. And I'm like, well, yeah, I so can't we, stand that you have sponsorships yeah. for your stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, cameras don't buy themselves. Yeah. So, you oh, know. Somebody else says they can see it. Oh. So maybe it's rolled out to. I'm very uh, confused. Yeah. That's interesting. 
It might okay. be. Anyway, I don't care. It doesn't matter. We I talked about care. it last week. so We did. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's get to some of these questions because we have some pretty, we have a lot of them. We have a lot of them. So, questions? Yes. Yeah. So Leslie's going to be picking some co questions out of the comments, that the, the live stream chat. I am going to be going through some ones that we saw on Patreon and the folks that are YouTube. Them. You're going to put question marks and ask your questions in the comments. Or you're I'm going to try to identify them. Or you're going to use a super chat and we're going to stop what we're doing and answer your question stop. right away. Yeah. So first, John O'Connor. First of all, John O'Connor, thank you for saving the world in the future. Uh, I don't <laughs> know if you do know that you're going to save the world in the future, but I do appreciate uh, I do appreciate it. Any updates on the Tell Me About Your Quality Control Issues project? Oh, I was going to leave this one for last. We will talk about it, and I will tell you what the answer to that question is. Fail. Santiago, <clears throat> is it still worth to buy guitars from big brands like Fender, Gibson, etc.? I don't see why not. I don't. I, uh, I think that you should. This is my opinion. This is my opinion. Um, I don't think that you should ever limit yourself to the kind of guitars that you should buy if you can't afford them and you want to try them. People get on me all the time, probably because I'm on YouTube, for fanboying about a Gibson, even though we've only ever made like five Gibson videos. Uh, I got one the other day that was like, why do you only make Telecaster videos? Because I made a Telecaster video. I'm like, um, anyway, get what you want. Buy from who you want. Try stuff. I bought a guitar from a big guitar company today. I bought two, two guitars from two different from two different big guitar companies, which are the same actually. <clears throat> you know, didn't look so. The same. I bought a Stingray bass today. Um, and I want to thank all of the folks that are on Patreon and are YouTube members, because that's the money that I predominantly use for these project guitars. So just to let you know, some of the project guitars that we got coming up, um. I bought a Stingray bass because we're going to make Music Man pickups. We're going to attempt it. Nobody seems to make aftermarket drop-in Music Man pickups besides Seymour Duncan and a couple other. I want to really try it. So working on that. And I also bought a Classic Vibe 60s Double Bound Tele. Brand new. Both the guitars I bought new. Um, Because I want to do some more Tele stuff. I'm going to try to put out a video Monday. <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to happen. We are really slammed this weekend. I'm going to try to, I am going to put out a video. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put out a video on Monday. And the title of the video is why I think the Squire 60s double bound telly is still in 2021, probably getting into 2022, probably the best Telecaster to buy especially if you're gonna mod it and like make it your own oh if you're gonna use more focused words that was a very long title well yeah <laughs> yeah it will make it properly clickbaity so that some people are mad and some people really enjoy it um yeah but that's gonna come out because i really do believe that that guitar is really good for four what was it 479 or something yeah it's really good thmmke Okay, I have the four-way switch in my telly with a regular telly neck pickup with the metal cover. Can I change this telly to a P90 in the neck and keep the four-way switch? <clears throat> you can. If you order a P90 from me, let me know that you're putting it in a telly. And I will ground it differently than I normally do. Because we got to add a third wire and we got to not ground the negative to the base plate. Um... Most P90s are done internally that way, but if I know when I'm making it that you're going to put it in a four-way telly, I will do it, and I will not charge you. Some companies like <coughs> Lawler will charge you like $15 extra to do that. I will not charge you extra. All right. <clears throat> BC Rich. If you could change one thing 
one aspect of the design of either the Les Paul or the SG, what would you change and why? Nothing. I am of the opinion that legacy instruments, uh, as far as how they are sold, just let them be what they are. And if you want to modify it, make a new model. And then find out that nobody wants anything to be changed <laughs> and nobody buys the new model. That sounded personal. And then go, no, I'm speaking for. You have to display it. I'm speaking for everybody who knows what I'm talking about. Thanks, Thomas. Thomas Tourville. He may, emailed me the other day. Um, <clears throat> everybody, get in the comments and just say hi to Tom Tourville. He's been around a long time in our chats, and uh, he's a good customer of ours. And uh, I don't want to out his business on the internets, but he's had a... He could use, like, one of those virtual high five... Virtual. How about like the video for Thomas? Oh. Because I'm serious. He could use it. He's, he's had a rough. Somebody was testing the thumbs down because we got a thumbs down and then it went away. Ah. And somebody <clears throat> said they wanted to test it. That's uh, he's, he's, had a, he's had a rough couple months. And uh, so like the video for, for Thomas, if you would. Just let everybody, let him know that you're, that you're watching. He's a, he's a good dude and he's been around for, been around what we're doing for quite a while. He's got some cool stuff. I he kinda does. have an idea about. He has some stuff coming still, right? Yeah, that red telly's gonna end up being his. And he's got the white strat. Yep. And he's got, yeah, he's got a few of the guitars. Uh let's see, Jeff. I'm back. Have a drink on me. Thank you. Thanks, man. I guess that's I appreciate the rest of the that. comment. Yep. Well, again, I don't want to get into his business, but he almost wasn't back. And he's grateful to be here. And so I think we're it's, grateful to have yes, you. Yes. Yes. So yeah, very cool. Jeff uh, asks, have you experimented with hybrid string sets, different gauges within the set, or do you stick with standard sets? Um, I've played with it a little bit. The closest thing that I will say that I've gotten to where I really like um, non-standard sets is I like some of the stuff from Stringjoy where they do like a 10 to 46 with a different G. Um, they mess around with the string tension a little bit. And I, I like their balanced, whatever they call their balanced sets. I like those. Um, who was I hanging out with one time? JD Simo plays like a 10 and a half E string and a couple, and I really liked his. But it was on a Les Paul, of course. It was on a 1960 burst. So, you know, that was probably more of the coolness factor as I'm holding this guitar than the string gauge. But um, I, I did like that, too. So I would say that those are a few things. I But to answer your question, I got like Ernie Ball 10 slinkies on everything right now. Um, I can't spend a lot of money on strings because... When we do these projects, I'll go through four or five sets of strings on one guitar in a day, a day, <laughs> like because what well, we're doing these videos and stuff. And what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, to, to shoot the video, it's not just doing a thing. It's doing a thing five times. And then sometimes you end up breaking a string and then you end up changing strings and you end up. So we go through a lot of strings. I mean, that's strings to me are like shop supplies to somebody else you know what i mean like i go through them a lot so i can't Not like paper towels but oh uh, we like go a lot way more paper towels we have wax potted uh about a hundred pickups in the last week so we have gone through a lot of paper towels yeah uh brett in the base world there are a lot of options for passive or active and preamps. Why don't we see more onboard effects in guitars? 
because when people take a legacy brand and they make modifications to it, then the person doesn't buy the new guitar and then they go back to the legacy. I'm, I'm just kidding. If you think about it though, I'm not kidding. Um, Les Paul, a couple years ago, had a boost circuit in it with a push pull. Nobody bought that guitar. Um, the Eric Clapton one, people buy because I think it's Eric Clapton. I hate those pickups, but the idea is good. Um, I think I just saw, because I was putting together, you know, for the news things that we do, um, where they're doing some more effects in guitars kind of stuff. I mean, back in the 60s, remember when I did some work on that Vox guitar and it had like a distortion pedal, it had a bunch of switches, it was all in there, like a fuzz pedal and stuff? Mm -hmm. That was in the 60s. So I know there people have done it, but it's just not a, not a common thing. Bass players are more adventurous than guitar players, in my opinion. Mr. Goat, uh-oh. What is your favorite Thanksgiving Day food? Um, well, I'm not a real big Thanksgiving person. Uh, I mean, I'm a thankful person, <laughs> but I don't typically get too heavy into Columbus-y, pilgrim sever celebrations because I'm Native American, so, you know, and... Um, yeah, so it's not really, really my thing. Um, and I don't eat animals. So there's a lot of Thanksgiving food that we wouldn't eat. Most. Everything is meat or casseroles with cheese and dairy and... Your mom. Your mom. Your mom. <laughs> specially makes a dressing, though. Because she knows, doesn't she? Like a bread crumble dressing? Like squash dressing? Squash dressing. Your wife makes that. Oh, it's you. Yeah, it is you. I couldn't, I don't know. It's been a long time since we've wow. had it. It's been a long time. That long was a time. Great grandmother's recipe. I mean, you know, let's move on to the next part. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Yeah, we don't really do mm -mm. it. We don't. Mm -mm. Favorite Strat Bridge for SSH. Uh, if you're talking about bridge pickup, center punch, full show. Um, if you're talking about bridge bridge, uh, I, I don't know why you would really need to change the one that came in the guitar. And we have a couple super chats that we need to catch up on. Well, I was trying to, but then you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just trying to get that off the screen. Oh, we got Canadian people though. They're like, you missed Thanksgiving because I think Canadian Thanksgiving was last week. Oh yeah. Um. Okay. Like, how far do I have to scroll? There it is. <laughs> oh, this is from Doc. Thanks for the super chat, Doc. Yes, thank you, Doc. Metric money. Uh, drinks on me. I can't tell you how impressed I am with the P90 and the DAFs. I can't wait to try the Firebirds. Thanks for everything. Man, you bought those Firebird pickups a long time ago. <laughs> well, because it took me forever to get them to him now, too. And now he's finally using them. Um, Doc actually sent me a picture of his double cut junior guitar that he built. He built it and a V that he's talking about using those pickups in. And they're really cool. So. Yeah, thanks so much. Go ahead. You want to close it? Is that what I think you're... you can just replace it, can't you? I don't With know. what? The next super chat that just came in. What? Oh, scroll all the way down then. Sorry, I didn't see that. Thank you. We're having a hard time keeping up. This is fun. <laughs> Thank you, Strum Bum. I like That's a that. new name. Uh, so thanks Thank for the you. super chat, sir. Um, might not be a sir. Oh, it might not be. I bought a inexpensive donor strat style with SSH and ordered your center punch with hot fives and all the electronics. Thanks to your channel to learn how the guitar works. I can't wait for the pickups. That is a guy. And um, <clears throat> he has been waiting for a while 
because of our problem with getting pick guards. And I just now got the pick guards. And we are super, we're a little bit behind, so we are catching up. But I, I think I actually made your stuff already. But I have to put it all in the pick guard and everything. So we're getting close. We're getting very, very close. Thank you so much for the super chat. Also, on top of that, I appreciate it very much. Don't you have more questions? I do. Because I'm trying to get through these two because um, we have two more. And then I want to talk about this whole thing with the... Mm -hmm. Uh, Shane, how ergonomic do you want your guitars to be? Do you want them to be smooth sailing like a music man, JP Majesty, or do you want them to fight you a bit? Um, well, I'm a Telly and a Les Paul Jr. guy. So if that answers your question, uh, yeah, I want them to fight a little. And I'm not, I'm pretty heavy handed. So playing those guitars that like are super easy, to, like super, super low action, super, super low string tension, I'm actually not that at home on them. Um, I'm, that's why I don't really, I mean, I have a Floyd Rose guitar right now, but I don't choose it most of the time because, yeah, I want them to fight a little for sure. I'm going to take this one more time, and then you can continue doing what you're good. Um, Sedonia, do you have to change the whole Tele bridge plate if you want to change the th three saddles to six saddles? Uh, probably, because it depends on the bridge plate, but yeah, probably. Usually you do. Yep. All right. Before we get into Acoustasonic stuff, mm -hmm. I want to answer the last first question, and that was... Should put it back up. Okay. And to clarify, when you said something about... That's the wrong one. Um, oh, Connor. It's Connor. It's who, whatever you said about oh. doing something, saving something. Oh, it's Con... Oh, it is John Connor. That's right. Anyway. My bad. Anyway, he probably still saved somebody from something. Okay. John O'Connor. You're right. It is John Connor in the Terminator. Um, any updates on the tell me about your quality control issues project? So here's what I did. In a video a couple weeks ago, I said, I want you to send me all of your, if, if you have actually had a problem with a quality control problem on a guitar within the last two calendar years, on a new guitar. I had to delete like three because people still sent me, I bought this guitar used and it has a quality control issue. I'm like, no, brand new. You have had to purchase the guitar brand new and you can send it to, I think the email address is, cause you can still do this. I'm not shutting it off. It's badqualitycontrol at gmail.com. And what I wanted to see was are there real quality control issues and from what companies? Because if the internet would have you, the internet would have you believe that every Gibson was a pile of garbage and that they were just, everything was terrible all the time. But what I believe happens is one person has a problem with a the guitar. They post it on social media. Everybody jumps on it. And now people think that there's 500 bad Gibsons when actually it's 500 comments on one guitar. You know what I mean? Like, um, kind of pack pile on mentality when actually there's only problem with one. So I want you, if you have a, and also is it set up or is it an actual quality control thing? <clears throat> so I want you to send me your quality control issues to badqualitycontrol at gmail.com because we're going to revisit this from time to time. But here's what I will tell you so far. First of all, the page of them that I have, so far, there's a bunch. Not one Gibson. Not one. I'm going to read just quickly down the list of the brands that have had legitimate they should have never left quality control problems that these people literally sent me photos. This stuff is like 
real. It's not fake. PRS, Fender, Eastman, uh, Fender, more Fender, Epiphone Les Paul Lazarus, but I don't think that was an actual quality control problem. I think the guitar shop should have caught that. The pickup was wonky. They could have, no big deal. Dean, Fender, uh, this one was Gretsch, and this one was an ES-335 Epiphone, not one Gibson. And all the problems were, the Epiphone stuff was Finnish related, <clears throat> because they're not that good, Epiphone finishes are not that good. They're not as good as the Gibson finishes, in my opinion, um, because the urethane is so thick and not properly cut and buffed, in my opinion. Coming from a guy who has been in the auto finishing industry for a long time, I will tell you that it is definitely for real. I actually looked at a new Epiphone today the Green Day one, the new Epiphone Green Day one, and the finish was just the same. It was like the guitar was wrapped in plastic. Um, but some of these other issues were, you know, like a PRS with the push-pull that was broken that wouldn't stay up, um, which is a faulty pot. Um, but see, all that stuff should have never made it to the floor because a lot of this stuff was locally purchased stuff. It, some of it was through the mail, but most of it was locally purchased, which is really interesting to me that the majority of the issues that people sent me were locally purchased and their guitar shops put crap on the floor and didn't check it hmm. also, which is kind of a thing, but not one Gibson. Um, kind of interesting there. So anyway, keep doing it as you come across those issues. Please send them to me. Um, cause I'd like to compile a bit of more, you know, more data on it. We don't have enough. So, but what I really care about when you send them is proof. I want to see pictures. I, you know, we don't want to just have a, he said, she said thing and don't send me my buddy bought a guitar and I heard about on Facebook and whatever. I want it to be your actual experiences. Because that's the way we can cut to the bottom of all the crap on that. So, anyway. Do you want to release that comment? What does that even mean? Yeah. Oops. I accidentally didn't. So you sold out to Fender. You're now a shill. <laughs> hmm. Must be new here. I like all guitars. I don't shill for anybody. What does you sold? I don't know what that means. He thinks I'm a sellout. If I was a sellout, I'd have a lot more money. If he was a sellout, we wouldn't be here giving away free content. <laughs> That's true. Just saying. If We'd I make it worth our while. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> the sellout will be big. It will. It will. If, if I was a sellout, somebody else's name would be on the building. Let's just say that. And I would be in hmm, Key West. Oh, I like it. With my feet up. Eating, drinking some, probably either a Mai Tai or a, what are those? No, oh, no, no. you wouldn't. No, no, no. What's the ones with the mint in them? Mojito? Mojito, yeah. Mojito is my jam when I have my feet up. I'd be in one of them pools with the swim-up bar, and it would be really hot outside, and I'd have a mojito in my hand. That's when you know I sold out. Yeah. Not before then. <clears throat> Do you want to take some questions, or you want to talk uh, let's about Let's talk about this topic. Fender thing really quick. Yep. Um, so, okay, so here's a cool thing. The new Acoustasonic came out. 
I've known about this for like six months. Um, they actually, I just, I'm just going to say this at the beginning. I have a little bird tells me some stuff once in a while. And that little bird told me a few months ago that they actually built another plant in Mexico for this guitar. That's how many of these they're selling of the regular Acoustasonics. So everybody that's like, the Acoustasonic is so dumb, has never played one and has never spent any real time with one. If you talk to a person who owns an Acoustasonic, who paid money for it, they love it. They're playing them live. They're using them at gigs. They're doing all kind of stuff. They're loving these things. The problem is, is they're 2000 bucks. So, makes sense to make a made in Mexico one. And the very first question is going to be, yeah, but it's the quality's not going to be the same. Well, I happen to know that the wood, the CNC pro, uh, programming, and everything is exactly the same. The guitar is exactly the same, except for. I guess we should say three things. The Fishman pickup that's in the bridge. So first of all, let's talk about what the American one has. The American one has a Fishman um, like under saddle pickup, like a, an acoustic guitar. It also has a, they have some kind of dumb name for it, but it's basically a contact pickup. Um, in really fancy acoustic guitars like a, a Cole Clark or a Mayton, um, there will be this pickup and it almost looks like um, a piece of tape. And they'll put it on the inside of the top of the guitar so that when you tap on it, um, you ever watch like Tommy Emmanuel do that thing where he's like beating on the guitar and it's, you know, he can do that and get all those sounds because there's a, a pickup in there that's like, it's sensing the actual you hitting the top of the guitar. So the expensive Acoustasonic has one of those. It has three pickups. And then the magnetic coil in the expensive Acoustasonic is like a, it's a Fender noiseless pickup. Tim Shaw designed it, but it's, and then it has the preamp and stuff has, is, has been engineered and designed with Fishman. There's a lot of time and effort that went into that, that Acoustasonic, the expensive one. So if you take an, an expensive Acoustasonic Tele and the Made in Mexico one, they're exactly 100% the same. Same wood, same vendors, same everything. Made a few miles south for a lot less because it's Made in Mexico. And the pickups are different. So the magnetic pickup is not to my knowledge noiseless it's just like a regular magnetic pickup it is voiced properly so they can use acoustic strings like phosphor bronze strings it does not have the tape under the body tap on it fancy pickup and it does have the fender fishman under the saddle pickup but the preamp electronics and stuff are a little bit different that's the only difference for almost half the money i think it is the jam when they come out with the jazz master version of it i think i'm gonna get one um because they're really fun to play uh if you've watched any of the release videos on it uh, my favorite one was mary spender because I love how she plays with no pick and she's really, I don't know. She's got a really neat style and her style, like really compliments, uh, that guitar. I also am really stoked on it because I like the dirty. So if you put the switch all the way back, I want to get one and do a video on it, but we're probably going to do our like in store impressions video as soon as I can find one. I tried to find one today, but I couldn't find one. But I really like how you can blend the sound from front to back, which is really, really cool. So you can go dirty to clean on the bridge pickup, like the Tele style pickup. 
you can go from one style acoustic guitar to the other and blend it. I, I just really like it. So it has like six total sounds, um, 1100 bucks, something like that. There's a link to it in the description. If you use those links, it does help out the channel. I do appreciate it. Um, but anyway, it's a really cool guitar. And I really think that unless you really need the third pickup in the expensive one, I don't think it's the better value. I think the cheaper one is the better value. Um, the neck is exactly the same. The neck specs are exactly the same. The frets are exactly the same. The wood is exactly the same. The tuners are exactly the same. Everything's exactly the same. So I think you buy the Mexican one for half the, almost half the money. 2000 to 1100 is almost half. So a little over half, I mean, almost half off. Any other clarifications yeah. you want to make? No. A little over 50%. Less. Less. More. Wait. Anyway. Drink some more. I will. Metallica uh, bourbon. That was the question earlier. Mine is apple tea and vanilla vodka yeah <clears throat> we're trying to like use up some partial bottles so that we can replace them because we're low mm -hmm. you want questions now let's do it all right what are the beverages tonight it's already done done um if you took a hard tail this is from david cornblatt if you took a hard tail strat if you took a hardtail strat, changed the scale, made it a set neck, added a maple cap, and put a double humbucker set in, and changed the neck to three by three tuners, would it be close to a Gibson? No. That was a lot. It would be a Schecter C1 Deluxe. <laughs> That's <was> very specific. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, really, it, that's the funny thing. All these people have made these guitars. Like, they're already out there. So you don't have to imagine what they would be. I guess a Schecter is still 25 and a half inch scale. But, hmm, is there a 24.75? I don't know. I mean, and if they're, I don't know. I wouldn't. I think way too many people spend way too much time when you could just have another guitar. See, here's the thing. Why would, okay, why would you do that? Because the reason a person picks a Les Paul is because they like the scale length. A person, or, you know, or how it sounds or whatever, how it feels. The reason a person picks a Strat is because of that. So why would you want one to be exactly the same as the other because you picked that one to be a certain way? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just don't. I'm not that. My brain doesn't do that. I'm just like, why not have more of them? When Surf Maui said, I'm about to assemble a couple of pick guards for my Strat because I'm going to be changing pickups and parts. Can I use gold or silver conductive tape to hook up the wires temporarily? I use alligator clips. So if you're trying to like to test and stuff, um, I use alligator clips. Just like get some cheap ones on Amazon, like a foot long or something. That's what I do. Charles Wallace says, I bought a Telecaster because of this channel. Had it not been for Dylan, I would not have a Telecaster. And thank you. And you would not have a 335. Ooh, he might. Rick Bonneville. Hey, do you have any trucker hats? Not the flex fit sort of affair. Um, okay, so... Let's take this opportunity for everybody, <clears throat> if you're a hat guy, to get in the comments, uh, maybe even below the video, not the one in the feed, 
and tell me what kind of hat you want. So, so this is like a, a flex fit hat, right? But you want like the mesh back, snap back, high front, like squared off, more like a baseball cap. Because, yeah, but it's a, it's a square. Let me know what you want. Because I was actually just telling Leslie the other day that I'm thinking about... My left foot is falling asleep. Um, thinking about designing some more hats. Two or three more hats, probably. And so that would be great. If, if you're a hat person, let me know and what you want. Because I will... I'm down. Neil Jelks. And also, they said earlier they were talking about no Thanksgiving in Scotland. So I think they might be in Scotland. Oh, cool. Dylan, when I build a guitar and string it up, I put a gazillion wines on the tuners to allow for messing about. It means I can remove the strings and refit them even when the end snaps off. LOL. So, you can do that. Here's the problem. Uh, because I, I kind of do that, but not that much. I don't put more than four or five wines. Because you put more than four or five wines, <clears throat> this it becomes a coil that expands and contracts when you play, um, leading to tuning instability problems. You want the string, all the wraps of the string, to be flat against the tuning key. You don't want to stack anything. You want it to be one. You want it to be one layer on the tuning key you don't want to have any stacking up of of string because what will happen is on your unwound well on all the strings what can happen is you get this like expansion and contraction that changes the tension of the string and you you run into tuning stability problems because it'll split between it'll go up and down and you may not feel it but it will it can i'm not gonna say it will it can cause that to happen on your wound strings, what'll happen is, uh, oh, and it'll also screw with your tuning ratio of your keys, because the bigger the wad is, the it'll mess with, it'll make it harder to tune the guitar because it'll change the tune the ratio of your tuning keys. Also, when you put winds um, on your wound strings, you would think, well, they're going to grip together, but what they do is they grip and then they slip and then they grip and then they slip, and you can hear that creaking that can be wound up strings on your tuning keys. So just make sure that you only have, you can put a bunch of winds on there if you want to, but make sure that they're all even, one layer uh, on that tuning key and not stacked. Great question, statement, observation. So what size hat, fitted hat do you wear? Why? I'm just curious. Um, in a new era, like when I buy a new Yankee cap, um, it's usually it, the good on the field, like the $40 new era. There's a reason. Okay. So I don't know if you guys know this or not, but if you buy a real new era on the field baseball cap, it is made in a different place than what I'm about to tell you. So the expensive ones that are like 40 bucks, uh, usually is a seven and a half. Okay. If you ever go and you look at a new era cap and it's got the little new era flag on it, that is made in a different plant and those are cheaper. And typically I have to try those on because sometimes they can be a seven and a half or some uh, seven five eights. Okay. Because people are talking about hats and Mr. Goat says, I have a big head, eight and a half. Holy he crap. He said, I feel like the fat guy on a plane. And then Jeffrey Egan is the next comment, and he says, one size fits most doesn't fit me. I need an adjustable kind because he has a small head. I was going to say, he doesn't. I've seen him in person. He doesn't have a big head. And Rick, um, so Rick is the one that originally asked the question, and he just said, mesh back like the Fender hats. You can purchase your logo. Do it. Just do it. LOL. Um, and Brett Johnson said, I thought mine was big at seven and three quarters. Um so anyway, it sounds like... So I don't have the biggest head around here. That's pretty awesome. Some of my com YouTube comments would think otherwise. 
Um, That's pretty awesome. I use so a anyway, large, I extra large flex just fit. The mesh back adjustable cap style sounds like. We can do it. Would we... would be best for a lot of people. I will work on that. I will work on that. I've been thinking about it lately. Um, David Kornblatt said, "Are you a Yankees fan?" Absolutely. Yep. Vox Guitars Rock. Dylan, I had someone complain about hating the stock pickups in their Squire Jazzmaster. Suggestions? Yeah. Dylan Talks Tone. Click on the little thing where it says you can buy pickups. And there are Jazzmaster pickups there. And they are fantastic. And they're not expensive. Like the same price as a Strat. Yep. We make really good uh, Jazzmaster pickups. <clears throat> Dale Boyle Music. Hi, Dylan Talks Tone. Do you think Fender will be releasing a new road worn line in 2022? I haven't heard anything about that, but I don't know. And I don't know. Um, yeah, I haven't heard anything about that. Wayne Hussey, I'm sorry, I can never remember your name. Um, so, Dylan. You talked me into a jazz master slash lipstick combo, and it was awesome. What weird pickup combo should I try next? I have no P90s or gold foils. So we don't really do a gold foil. Um, weird combos. So I want to try a strat pick guard with three telly bridge pickups in it you've been talking about i've that. been talking about that for a long time that would be cool um i have a friend who has a custom shop fender that is a single 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 like a strat it's a normal strat and it has strat pickups in the neck in the middle and a tele bridge pickup in the bridge position, you'd sort of have to screw around with the routing underneath, make it be a swimming pool thing. But I think putting tele bridge pickups where they don't belong would be super cool. And not that many people have done it. Charles Wallace is building a guitar right now where he's doing, I think he's putting a, tel a tele bridge pickup in the middle between two humbuckers, which is also very weird. But I totally, totally agree with it. I think it would be super cool. You ready for another question? I am. What are you responding to? Um, a question about oh. drinking because we already talked about it. Um, another Wayne Hussey. I have a, quote, space in my rack for an Acoustasonic Fishman in the Washburn I gave my son was awesome. And I don't have a steel six-string acoustic right now. Very tempted by these. Dude, I, see, that's what I'm talking about. So here's the thing. I love a telly neck. I love a telly neck. And I think that, okay, so I have a serious acoustic guitar. Like I, my McPherson is unreal. And I think if you gig at all, or if you're playing around with any kind of experimental sounds, I don't know why everybody doesn't own one of these things. I just think they're so cool. I I don't know. I I said it when they first came out though. When the when the Jazzmaster one especially came out. And my buddy actually bought one and I got to play it and I was like, this thing is so fun. Because it makes you think outside the box when you play the guitar, which automatically makes you play differently than you would already play like leslie gives me a hard time all the time because i'll pick up a guitar and i'll play and i'll just play the thing i always play like same little riff or testing riff or whatever but then i'll get a guitar that is completely outside of like when i got that schecter with the sustainer in it you're like you're, you're playing completely different like i wasn't even playing the same stuff yeah that wasn't a complaint it was noticing he was inspired to play something different yeah and i think that acoustasonic thing is an inspiring change you know i think it's cool garrett overstreet says dylan i completed a form fill on your site was it received no response yet thanks garrett overstreet 
It depends what he asked me. And Wayne Hussey said, outside the box is where I live. I love that. I love it, too. I don't know if I got it because I don't see it here. But I will look. <laughs> Purposefully. Yes. I don't see it. What else we got? Garrett Overstreet is the name. I know. Okay. Um... We have Tam51. Have you ever tried GHS strings on any of your guitars as I like their strings? I have. I think they are a good... The cool thing about GHS strings is they're not expensive. They don't, like, do some crazy... Th they're just strings, right? And they don't do some crazy thing. Or make a guitar sound weird. Because um, some of these, you know, fancy, unobtainium, crazy strings can change how your guitar sounds. And the cool thing about a GHS set is they don't do that. And they're cheap. And, and they're very available. Uh, Garrett Overstreet. Have you done a video on any advantages of a slanted humbucker in the bridge? I've read that Eddie only did it because he was copying Leo's single coil on a single, on an angle, and had no idea if there would be any benefit to it for a humbucker. Um, who else does an angled humbucker right now? Fender, I think, has a guitar with an angled humbucker in it. I, there's no reason you couldn't, except for that people will be like, that's not going to work because it doesn't line up with the strings. Uh, it's not very marketable. Um, is, uh, would the, if you're wanting to put it in, cause he's trying to think about maybe putting it into a model of his guitars. Mm -hmm. I, the only reason I wouldn't do it, unless you could like market it as a being a thing that works. Because people are going to tell you that it's dumb and it doesn't work. Um, it is different. All of these extended range things are actually slanting the humbuckers. They're actually splitting them and, you know, going like this. Um, so, I, my, my real answer is, I don't know. But I wouldn't put it in a guitar if I was designing a guitar by just turning it a little. I would probably slant it like an extended range. Slanting it like an extended range pickup, but putting in a guitar that's not extended range would be very cool. Some folks are saying um, Kramer has one, Dan Electro. Yep. Mm hmm. All right. Box guitars rock. Are they really moving all, parentheses, most, Fender guitar production to Mexico, or is that just a rumor? No. Corona's killing it right now. No, they're making tons yeah. of guitars. That was a bad joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Corona, California. Um, no, they're making tons of guitars. And, no, they're not. No. Doug Price, what do you think of a Strat Bridge pickup in the middle of a telly? Somebody asked that last week. Um, do it. It's, it's most of your uh, modern tellies are routed for it already. Stick it in there. Put a five-way switch in there. Like wire it like a strat and do it. Um, I'm not a. I I'm not really. I don't know. I, it's not my thing, but it's. You know, I just bought that telly. Maybe I should buy one of them pick guards and do that while we have it put together a Nashville set because we don't have that. Cool. Yeah. You just inspired me. Iggy Tommy said, didn't Van Halen angle the bridge humbucker because it was only 48 millimeter pole spacing on a tremolo bridge? See, that's what I thought because he used, uh, it would be 49.2 millimeter. Um, 
Yes, I'm pretty sure that's why. Because if you angle it, then you get a couple more millimeters and he gets pole spacing. Brett Johnson wants to know what's the pickup of the week? I don't know. You were talking about a pickup each week. I know. Oh. You said I don't know. Like Which you one didn't know. should we talk about? Get in the comments and tell me. What one do you want to talk about? We've done uh, flat six telly. We've done P90s. We've done center punches. I guess we haven't talked about our strat stuff. Is that what you want to talk about? Or are you waiting for them to respond? Oh, let's see what they want to know about. Okay. Even if we talk about another one again. Okay. Song Fantasy. What's the best way to treat a caramelized fretboard like Charvel's Pro Mod series, for example? Don't do anything. Just um, wipe it with a damp rag and microfi like a microfiber so you scrub the goo out of the fret frets and don't do anything. Don't put oil on it. Don't, I, in my opinion, as long as the guitar is properly humidified, I don't think you ever have to do anything to them. Because your hands will, because most of those guitars, uh, most of those roasted fret, maple fretboards and necks are not finished. So the oils from you playing them is just going to be enough. I wouldn't put anything on. All right. So... Larry Lane asks, have you seen Seth Lee Jones guitar with the three bender arms on the bridge? Yes, I have. Benders are interesting, right? Um, I always kind of wanted to build a bender telly, but I'm scared to because I don't, it's a lot of pushy pulley arms. It's like having a what are those things where you put the ping pong ball in and then it like rolls around and does stuff and tips over? Can um, what do they call that? What do they call that machine? If there's a name for that machine, and my mind is blanking it right now. Um, what's it called? You know, where you put like a ping pong ball in and it tips over some bottles and then those bottles tip over some dominoes and then those dominoes tip over some, you know. Then a string goes and whatever, and the next, and they, um, God, what is the name of that? What do they call those? Somebody will say. Somebody's going to know. Somebody's going to know. Were you finished otherwise? Yes, I'm finished otherwise. <laughs> Yo, yo. What do yeah. you, sorry. <laughs> what do you think or know about Tone Rider pickups? I found cases of them in a locker. Uh, Tone Rider? Is that the guy that Rube did Goldberg? Rube Goldberg. Doc, got it. Thanks. Thank you. I knew that I was like trying to remember what I was like. I knew what it was because and I think people are then they're doing the mousetrap game. Oh, they're saying mousetrap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, let me see if those are the pickups or not. I think that's the pickup that I rather not give my opinion on. Oh. I think. I will not give my opinion on Tone Rider pickups. Okay. Because, I'll tell you why. Um, but if you found cases of them, why wouldn't you just try them? I'll tell you why. I'm pretty sure. I think this is the guy. If you're not sure, you should not speak about anybody. No. That is not the guy. I do not know about them. Cool. Try him. I don't know anything about him. Um, I think it might be, though, actually. Anyways. Dog wants to know any Al Nico 8 pickups? Yes. But not right now. That was sneaky. Yeah. We're waiting for a certain pink guitar that Ooh. the internet really, really wants me to buy. Um, that was sarcasm. Yeah. We're waiting for the Machine Gun Kelly Telly to get here. I love that. Can we just call it the Kelly Telly? We could. 
Everybody wants to call it him MGK, which I think is stupid. What's his name? That's what he goes by primarily, though. But you said he doesn't want to go by that. He wants to go by something. No, that is his performing name. If you knew him personally, he doesn't want you to call him that. You do not know him personally. That's true. Okay. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, yeah, when the pink guitar gets here, that humbucker's coming out, and I have a plan. I've already got it kind of penciled out. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I've got it penciled out. I think I know what I'm going to do. Here's here's the thing. Is um I guess Matt at Texas Social Guitars doesn't know that he's challenged me. But he's constantly said that the DiMarzio Super Distortion is his favorite pickup. There is no better humbucker in the world than the DiMarzio Super Distortion. And you took that personally as and a challenge. And I was like, I agree that it's very good, but I think it can be better. And I don't have anything like that. Mm. And the Machine Gun Kelly guitar will be perfect for that type of pickup. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I was going to buy the Machine Gun Kelly guitar anyway. And I'm like, so I'm going to use that guitar. I really want to call it the Super D, but I probably can't. Um, Yo Yeo said that wasn't a loaded question, by the way, LOL. But there are a couple of people that are... The slogan would be get more D. They are saying (laughs) that... um, Sorry. So Magic Gaz says, I like my Tone Rider P90s. Um, Iggy Tommy said, Tone Rider is a good, affordable pickup in the UK. I think they made pickups for Squire CV models several years ago. So it sounds mm. like some folks are familiar with them. So that's cool. cool. Good. Um, and then Wayne Hussey said, I was actually thinking of two wide range humbuckers with something weird in the middle. Telly Bridge mid sounds cool, needs a bigger hole than a strap mid, right? Do you do a wide range? Body already has SP routing. Okay. <coughs> so, Wayne, let me get back to you on that. I think I can make you a wide range, and this is something else I've been thinking about doing. Anyway, I think I've been, I've been tossing around the idea of making a wide range pickup in a humbucker size. So not, okay. When you buy a Mexico, made in Mexico or a Squire wide range, it is not a real wide range pickup. There's really just regular size humbucker in a big case. So I was thinking that I could probably improve upon that and put it in a regular humbucker that people could put in any guitar. That being said, our Slant 6 is basically that already. And it is real good. So, I forgot that I do that. So I don't need to do that. Yeah, our Slant 6 is that. What I should do, actually, I guess what I should do is I should put it in a case that looks like a wide range so that Mm. you'd know what you're getting. Because right now we put it in like a mesh thing and you can't tell what it is. But our Slant 6 humbucker is that. So get two of those and a Tele Bridge pickup in the middle. (laughs) That'd be super fun. Sunny Larson said... So Iggy Tommy has said a couple times that he missed the um, topic about why the Fender Acoustic Sonic is better. I don't think we're going to repeat a conversation. Yeah, there's so a there's a bunch there. You might have to go back to the catch replay. Catch the for replay. That. Sorry, you were late. Um, Sunny Larson said before I install the pickups were 14.2k bridge, 10.3k neck. After I installed, they are now 13.6. So 14.2 to 13.6. Um, and the neck went from 10.3 to 12.5. Changed. Hmm. Check through a six-foot cable. Is that from the pots? It's from the pots and the cable. Yeah, that's why. Yep. 
What would Alnico 8 offer that's new? So, um, it's, it will change, uh, what's the easiest way to say this? It changes the efficiency of a given size of coil. So, um, can you hand me one of them strap pickups right there? Without making a mess, maybe. Oh, there we go. There it goes. Okay, so if you have this size of coil, like however many winds is on this coil, and then you put all Nico 5 magnets in it, which is what these are, it will have a certain amount of inductance, right? And if you put more wire on there, so if we put more winds, like if we put another thousand winds on there, the inductance will change, but the frequency response of the pickup will change in one way. Usually it means that the mids will go away and the highs will go away a little bit. It'll get a little muddy. Or we could leave the coils the same size and we could put stronger magnets in it and that would change the inductance, but in a different way. Um, and so the frequency response that you would get, like the, uh, what's the easiest way to say it? So people don't talk about it very much, but there's something called the resonant peak of a pickup. And basically it's the frequency that that particular pickup, because of that combination of magnet, that combination of wire, the diameter of the wire, how thick, you know, how thick the actual wire is, um, how much wire is on there. So how many winds there is, the dimensions of the coil, how fat, how tall, all those things will give you a resonant peak, which is like, this is the frequency that this particular pickup is the best at making. Okay. So when you change magnets or you change winds, you can say, well, I want that peak to be over here or I want it to be over here, or I want it to be fatter or thinner, the Q. So all those things can be adjusted. And when you change the magnet, that's what you do. What I want to do is I want a higher output pickup that hits the amp harder, that is still tight. So not tight like a, not tight like an EMG tight, cause I want it to still compress like a regular, magnetic pickup like a regular not active pickup but i want it to be hot enough to hit the amp hard but i don't want to lose those crispy highs that i like so much that all of our pickups have and so i think giving us more magnet playing around with some stuff that's going to get us more in that direction that's what i'm hoping john on eight can't play any right he said if you can't call it super d can you call it batman distortion so most of our pickup our, our pickup naming philosophy is always based around engines philosophy sounds like most of the time a big ask for just naming a pickup yeah but i don't have a diesel i don't have a uh, there's a few things i don't have so we'll, we'll look into it um and john roddy i did get your email and i am going to email you back you have he basically he's like i've got this guitar it's a blank slate i want you to pick the pickups hmm. so that'd be kind of fun jason albert said since matt called you out on the pickup call it call the pickup the toasted one so he didn't call me out or anything I, he doesn't even know anything but he just said and he made he said that and he, you know, he said it a lot of times and it's made me think that and I'm like, hmm. Big D energy. He's right. I don't have that kind of pickup in my lineup. The eight ball is kind of like that, but really the eight ball was just an evolution of the center punch. So it wasn't really, yeah. Oh, did anybody pick a pickup that they want to talk about? Um, one moment. Hey, dastardly Dave. I see um, you in there. He just got here. George Anderson wants to know how hard is it to put a piezo pickup in an acoustic guitar that already has electronics? I am not the guy to ask that question. 
Um, if it didn't have anything in it, I could tell you how to do it, but I don't know because I don't know what's already there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like somebody asked, have you talked about X? And then I don't remember you lost it or missed it. What or... it was. Um Would you know what Matt is doing with the less ply? I do not. No. So the DTT winkle is What's that? Oh my god, a winkle. That's so funny. The winkle is the rotary engine that's in a Mazda RX-7. Oh, so related? It's related. I lost it. I don't know what somebody asked about. Oh, no. I mean, a lot of people are asking about... So talk about Slant 6 since... Iggy Tommy has a question about okay. slant six pickups. He said, so your slant six pickups are hum canceling rather than a humbucker? Yes. Uh, so what we do with them is, oh, let me grab a couple of bobbins. So what we do with them, I don't have humbucker bobbins sitting here, but what we do with them, um, so I'm just going to use some strap bobbins as an example, is we take out these three slugs and these three slugs. So each bobbin only has three slugs in it. They're all slugs, there's no screws. And so they're not coil splittable because if you coil split them, then three strings die. But um, what they do is you have three, these three strings and these three strings, but basically, the net result is two hum canceling single coils, but they don't sound like a typical humbucker because it's only half a pickup really. Um, so it sounds like a single coil humbucker. It doesn't, it sounds like a humbucker still, but more single coily, which is what a wide range humbucker is supposed to sound like, like a fender wide range humbucker isn't really supposed to sound like a Gibson. It's supposed to sound like a Fender. Like when they design that pickup, they're like, we want it to sound like a humbucker, but not all the way. We want it to kind of sound still more like a Fender guitar. And they do. Um, and so that's what we did. The only thing I haven't done is put it in a case that makes it look like a wide range. Because a lot of people don't realize that a wide range humbucker, you know, when you see a wide range humbucker and like one side of the cover has these three showing and one side has these three showing, everybody thinks that that pickup only has three screws in it, but it's underneath there. There's all six on both sides. It's just a humbucker where what we do is half of that. It's really cool. It sounds really cool. It's a, uh, it's its own thing, for sure. Um, but you put two of those slant sixes in a Les Paul and put it in the middle position, man, that is a great sound. Doc's suggestion, he's actually the one that asked about El Nico 8, and he said, how about calling it the straight 8? I thought of that. I did think of that. Um, Telecaster 48 says, Dylan, I have a 2008 Gibson SG that won't stay in tune, mostly on the G string. What is the best fix for this issue? Um, if you've not taken it to a really good, and I don't mean like, and nothing against these people, but like nothing against them, but don't take it to like Guitar Center or somewhere. Take it to a really good guitar tech. Pay really good money, like... 50 or 75 bucks and have them really look over the setup and see if there is something that can be done with the nut to cut it properly. I am not a fan of any of the gadgets 
that people put on their Gibsons to pull their strings around and do all kinds of stupid stuff. If you cut the nut properly, a lot of that's going to go away. Um, is it ever going to be 100% perfect? Maybe not. But if you're having a problem where it's annoying you enough to ask about it, chances are that there's some room to improve it with a really good setup from somebody who really knows what they're doing. Um, but it'll cost you. You know, I don't know where you live and I don't know what currency you're in and like what area of the world you're in. But, you know, where we live, well, we live everywhere, but in a relatively bigger market, like let's say Atlanta or New York or somewhere, you're going to spend 50 to $75 for a really good setup where somebody will look at that for you. But it's worth it. And maybe swap the nut out. If it's really bugging you, swap it out for a graph tech nut. Um, there will be diehard people who will say it kills the tone in your guitar, but they're just wrong. They're awesome. And they slip around better and they stay in tune better. Um, do you want to do a double talk about a pickup? Because the one that was previously recommended that I forgot and lost was the Hot 5. Oh, the Hot 5 Strat? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, that's what, uh, well, not these, but similar to them. Um, so I, I'll, I'll, well, here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to tell you about both of the strap pickups in our line that we have currently. Um, because you need to understand the difference between them and how they, how I got there. <clears throat> The Hot Five is an answer to the Texas Special because they're terrible. Fender Texas Specials are terrible. The Classic Five is because I wanted a sound that would sound like Stevie Ray, Dirty Pool, and like any kind of clean, early John Mayer. See, a lot of people have the misconception that the Texas Special is what Stevie Ray used because at the time of his death, Stevie Ray was in the process of developing a pickup with Fender that was going to be called the Texas Special, as far as I can recollect. And it was a really hot pickup. And those Texas Specials is what they put in all the SRV guitars that you could buy for like 2500 bucks or whatever. But that is not what he used. He did not ever use that pickup. It just got associated with him because Texas, because blah, 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 blah. They're terrible. Um, I can't stand them. You, there are people, I'm sure, and lots of people buy them. But a lot of people buy them because they think Stevie Ray used them and you're going to get Stevie Ray's tone from them. And that is just not right. Stevie Ray's sound came from an extremely low output pickup. 5.7K on the bridge, 5.7K on, I apologize, 5.7K on the bridge, no, 5.6K on the bridge, 5.7K in the middle, and 5.7K in the neck. The bridge pickup was actually the lowest output pickup in his guitar, um, in the original SRV guitar. So... When we came out with our Classic 5s, I knew that they were really, really low output. Ours are a little more than that. I think they're like 5'9". But they're Alnico 5, and ours are flat because we don't do a lot of like staggered pole piece stuff because most people these days are playing a 9.5 inch radius and up. And most people who buy our pickups are using, um, you know, they're buying Classic Vibes. They're buying, you know... Mexican strats and tellies and stuff. So we don't do a lot of the staggered pulpy stuff because you don't need it in a nine and a half inch radius. So the classic five is a Stevie Ray, John Mayer, low output, chill pickup, super clean. And then the hot five is way hotter like a Texas Special, but it's not all flat and muddy and stupid on the top and like your tone knob is turned down. 
and it compresses cleaner. It's better. Must be more helicopters. Mm -hmm. The way it hits the amp is much, much better and much more flexible than a Texas Special. Texas Specials hit the amp so hard that they never really give you good cleanup, in my opinion. And ours don't do that. Our, our, our Hot Fives really clean up with the knob and they're really awesome. But they're flat. They're not staggered. Because you, if you play anything except a seven and a quarter or even in that, I don't care really. Modern guitars with modern strings, you don't need staggered pole pieces anymore. So everything's flat. But that's the kind of where we got, how we got to where we got with the Strat stuff. And just recently, I changed the Hot Fives because there wasn't enough difference between the two sets for most people to hear. I mean, I could hear it because I made them. But a lot of people were like, which ones should I get? I can't, you know. And so I also got access to some guitars this year um, that I previously had never seen. And, you know, anyway, I, I got access to some pretty special guitars. And I was like, hmm, I should make my Hot Fives more like this. Still my own thing, but a little more like this. So we revised it a little bit. So I think they're about 7K, something like that, right in there. And they're Almico 5. And they're amazing. They're really, really good. There you go. Magic Gaz. Would you ever buy a pickup wound with silver wire? I saw some recently. <sighs> to do that experiment. Do you know how much this stuff costs? You can't buy a small spool. I'll look into it. Sounds like the answer is no. They're a thousand a piece. Or a thousand a set. They're a thousand a set. Not by the pickups. How can you buy the silver wire? I'll look into it. I really oh. will. I Seymour Duncan. Right. But can it you also imagine? tarnishes, right? Yes. So what does that mean? You have like expiration date on your expensive pickups and then they're trash? Yeah. Uh, I thought SRV's number one was like a 63. Um, yeah, I don't want to get into because I can't totally remember and I don't want to be wrong. But what everybody thinks his guitar is, is not what it is. And that's all I can tell you right now because I can't remember the other details. But I do know it for 100% fact. But I can't remember what it actually is, so I won't get into that right now. Does a Seymour Duncan Hot Rails pickup have a magnet on the bottom or at the blades? So the way they do that is it's actually two blades and there's a magnet in between them and they touch on both sides. Yeah, All right. It is 923. Oh, do snap. A last question. Um, Fat Philosopher says, what is the next big breakthrough in guitar tech that you want to see? <clears throat> um... I want to see... Besides a Tone Master Princeton, so that's not a big breakthrough because that's just them making a new amp. Um, there's two things that I think are really cool. I want to do a whole video on this. But I haven't completely flushed out my feelings on it. I watched a video today and it was about how Saab because I'm a car freak. So how Saab in the 80s was like a foreshadowing of the future of what the automobile industry was and everybody thought they were weird. But in actuality, we are doing things the way Saab did them back then when people thought they were weird. And how Tesla is that now. How everybody thinks Tesla's a little off and a little weird, but in the future, Chances are 
it's going to be normal life. Hmm. But the way Saab built cars is weird. They are weird. We're weird. And I want to do a video on that because I really, not that specifically, but I really feel like there are a lot of things that need to change in the guitar industry that will take a lot of time and everybody will buck and be angry and not like, but in 10 years, we are all going to be playing amps that don't have tubes in them, that have touchscreen interfaces, that and sound really good, like really sound good. Um, because power consumption is a thing, you know, like the fact that you put 1200 watts of power into a 40 watt amp makes zero sense. And the EU does not like that. And there's going to be a point where nobody's going to like that. Um, if you can't have a blow dryer that has X amount of watts in the EU, you're not going to have a guitar amp that has it. You know what I mean? Like, there's life is going to change, and we're going to have to evolve with it. I really... And so I, I want to see amplifier technology move forward. I want to see more digital stuff. I want to see... Um, I don't care about guitars that much. Like... I don't think guitars are going to ever really change that much. I think they're going to stay pretty. The core base of what a guitar, an electric guitar is, is going to probably be pretty close to the same. But I think the way we interact with a guitar on the other fronts is going to change. The amp, the pedals, the effects, all that stuff is going to change. Because... Technology is going to move past tubes because tubes are stupid, really. And the people that play the guitar and the use of the guitar in music already and is continuing to change. So our kids and their kids are still going to play guitar. But it's going to be different. And they're going to use it differently. They're going to make different noises with it. And I'm really excited to see what that is. What noises those are. That's probably the biggest thing. I want to see where music is going. Because I am very excited about it. Even though people are not. I am. Art. Thank you. Um, said FYI, the description on Amazon for your fret polishing kit is messed up. It says Ultimate FMC posters the Transformers over and over. Oh, really? So it sounds like you have a bad link. Must have a bad link. Yeah. We were just talking about that, though. Mm -hmm. so. We need to. Good timing. Yeah, we need to update a bunch of stuff. So, so thank you fret for that. polishing kit. We need to check on that. Mm hmm. Cool. That's it. Thanks, I mean, everybody. I think it's it. You can keep going if you want. No. I'm done. You're done. Yeah. I'm done, too. I'm tired, man. We <sighs> are not having a second show, by the way, tonight. Yeah. We, um, we've had a really, really busy couple weeks. Um, you guys can't see it, but there are pickups everywhere. Literally dozens and dozens and dozens of them. And it's... It, I'm tired, man. I'm really, really tired. So we are not going to have a second show. We did release a new um, music. Uh, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> we did release a new Dylan and Leslie video on our other channel. There's a link to it in the description. I did get a new camera lens. We're not using it right now, but I did get a new camera lens this week. It's really cool. We shot a video about that. And we have a bunch of other. I got to drive the new Bronco last week. So there's a video coming out about that. Um, we are taking the next week off from everything. mostly every. We're still going to shoot content and video stuff, but I think we'll still probably have a live show on Thursday also. But Leslie has the week off of work, and we don't 
get holidays very often. Yeah, we've been um, really bad about actually taking vacations since we started traveling. Yes. Which seems really odd because everybody thinks we're on vacation all the time and, and we're not. And I'm really bad about just saying stop. Like, I'm bad about saying stop at the end of the day. Like, I'll start back up working, winding a pickup. Last night I did it. I started winding pickups again at 7.30 or 8 o'clock last night. I just cannot stop. So, you know, if there's something to do, I want to get it done. And uh, I'm really bad about it. And so when she said she had next week off from work, I was like, I'm taking a week off too. I'm not. And I booked just a week at the beach. Yeah. So we're going to be at the Outer Banks in North Carolina, which is really cool. And we're really going to enjoy it. So, maybe we, we will. To, we oh. have to wait for this one. Favorite chat from Doug. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Hello and good night. I appreciate it very much. We had a meeting and crazy tonight. Yeah, I feel that. I get it. Well, thanks, y'all. This has been super fun. I guess we will see you uh, Monday when I make a video that is called... Long, gonna... long name. What am I going to call it? I'm going to call it uh, Why the Classic Vibe Telly is Still the Best Telly to Buy in 2021. Mm. Or something like that. <laughs>